Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. So last time we got to explore pretty much exclusively the Island of Wonders, but I think we got everything out of the way as far as looking at everything and talking to everything. Sorta, kinda, uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to the rest when we, we come to it. The Isle of Wonders has a lot more secrets to divulge. What's through here? Mm. The entrance to chessboard land consists of a stepped marble bridge with astonished looking pillars. Alexander is standing at the edge of a strange land with rolling checkered hills. Two chessboard knights stand before the marble entrance, guarding a path which wanders like a ribbon into the velvety hills. Now, if you guys remember, uh, or if you haven't played yet, uh, Phoenix Online's uh, The Silver Lining, which is sort of a 3D King's Quest sort of um, sort of alternate timeline story, or maybe it's a, I think it's a direct sequel in between the events of King's Quest six VI and seven. I don't know, uh, something like that. But it's actually pretty good if not if the puzzles are a little obtuse. But what what's the cool thing is is you get to visit a lot deeper into Chessboard Land. Which is neat. There's a lot of puzzles to do back there, but I think in King's Quest VI proper, this is about as far as we go. A noble white chess knight stands at the top of the marble stairs. No, not white. White! A red chess knight stands at the top of the marble steps. The sky of chessboard land is a brilliant shade of blue and has heavy cotton candy clouds. Oh, cotton candy clouds? What? This is like a Beatles song. Uh, well, hello, folks. Excuse me, what land lies beyond? What land? Chessboard land, you knave! I see. And is Chessboard land part of the land of the Green Isles? It is the home of the Red and White Queens, yeah. rulers of the Isle of Wonder, fairest of the islands that owe loyalty to the king of the land of the Green Isles. You did hear he's dead, but right? perhaps not for long. Oh. What do you mean? What is the purpose of unity with the great king and queen dead? The princess is worth serving, but the feud with the other isles is strong. Oh, oh well, uh, cue the, the two queens, I suppose. Hello. I must insist, your highness. I shall send the lump of coal to the wizier and the princess as a present for their wedding, and that's the end of it. And I suppose you'll leave me with only this stupid spoiled egg to send, your highness. I want to impress the new king and queen of the realm as much as you do. As queen of this island, I have every right to that lump of coal. Who isn't queen of this isle? The lump of coal is in my possession. Therefore, I shall do as I please with it. Besides, there's nothing wrong with that spoiled egg. The egg, though delightfully spoiled, is not nearly so valuable as the lump of coal, and you know it. Your highness always got to carry the singing stone. It's not fair that you get the coal, too. That doesn't count. The singing stone was stolen by that horrid beast. I should get to keep the coal just because my stone was stolen. It wasn't your stone. It belonged to the Isle of Wonder Treasury. Your Highness always thinks that everything is hers. Excuse me, my good man, but could you settle an argument for us? Which of us should get to carry the coal and which the egg? Remember, white is the color of deserving truth and virtue. Quiet, Your Highness, and let him make up his own mind. I, for one, shall be more proper, and not even mention the fact that red is the color of love. I'm sorry, Your Majesties. I'm partial to both red and white, but I'm afraid that I don't know how to solve your problem. One of you will just have to be gracious and allow the other the lump of coal. What a ridiculously stupid idea! Quite ludicrous. He was a lot of help, wasn't he? Oh yes, obviously a man of high intelligence. Well, I'm glad I could bring them together over something if it's over nothing but my stupidity. The lump of coal goes much better with my gown anyway. Black and red are imperial colors. The 
That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Red does not go with anything, being much too self-conscious. I can still hear you. White is the perfect accompaniment to any color. Surprisingly clearly, since you're about a quarter mile away. Okay, well, that was fun. I get to be a little bit privy to some, some uh, royal bickering. But that does give us a lot of interesting information. So they want to give a gift to the new vizier and uh, Princess Kasima for their wedding, a coal and an egg. Um, I think one of those things we need, I forget which, but we don't know why yet, so whatever. But they also mentioned that their singing stone, the greatest treasure of their well, treasury, was stolen by, apparently, the beast. Ooh, so maybe this is why they are feuding with the island of the beast. And as we go along, I believe every single island has had a treasure of theirs stolen by another island, which seems kind of petty, but uh, remember that. Also, uh, she dropped something. The Red Queen has dropped her scarf on the steps. She did indeed. Can we talk to it? Calling out into chessboard land would do little good. All right, fine. Mine. Alexander picks up the Red Queen's scarf. Hmm. I think we should be a gentleman about this. Here, my oh, my ice cream melted. I found a red scarf. I believe the Red Queen dropped it. The Red Queen is always dropping her scarves. Oh. She thinks it's fashionable. Keep it and consider yourself honored. All right, free scarf for me. Um, maybe I can just go return it to them anyway. Nope. Checkmate. Only chess pieces allowed in chessboard land. That's racist. That's right. Humans aren't allowed in and never will be. You don't Stay get a crown out. anymore. Nope. No crowns for you. Mine. Mine. My, that's a hit. Uh, now I'm okay. <laughs> All right. Well, a little bit xenophobic. These, but they, that might have something to do with the uh, feud of the island, or maybe that's just the way it's always been. I wonder how I got myself into the island during. Um, the silver line? I don't remember. Anyway, we have a scarf. Great. Well, let's go visiting some of the other islands. And uh, you know what? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna take one of these with me. Alexander already has a frozen head of lettuce. Um, no, I don't. It's, it's water. All that remains of the iceberg lettuce is a rapidly evaporating puddle of green water. How do I get rid of it? The melted iceberg lettuce feels like a puddle of green water. Just chilling out in my pocket, huh? <laughs> chilling. Would you lovely flowers be interested in this? Guess not. They don't want to be watered? I was just trying to toss it out. There's no reason to use that on the... Why use that on the iceberg lettuce? I want to get rid of it. Alexander already had... I don't! I really don't! Does it just evaporate all on its own, I guess? Or does it carry out a puddle of water for the rest of eternity? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. And I'm kind of sick of the Isle of Wonder. Let's go explore some of the other ones. Uh, Isle of the Beast. Let's go check it out. Alexander pulls out his magic map. In public? Oh. All right. Isle of the Beast we go. Actually, we haven't really had a chance to do the Sacred Mountain because I have forgot the copy protection. We'll have to do that. Uh, we'll see if we can do that today. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. In his pants. Ooh, that's a musical cue that sounds familiar. Hello, little dear. But first... There's an odd little creature dangling from that tree branch. Hmm, didn't the... Uh, uh, this music is sure reminiscent of the Island of Wonder, isn't it? Yeah, it seems like kind of a reprise of that song. Uh, and didn't the bookworm said he needed a dangling something or other as one of the things he would accept? Hello, friend. Aren't you an odd-looking little fellow? I'm not! Odd-looking you are! Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you could speak. Speak not? Funny is, speech I am and nothing but. Your sentences are a little bit strange, my little uh, half-stegosaurus, half-possum buddy. You speak strangely, friend. Strange my speech is not. Eloquence I speak with. But who are you? And why are you here? Away I fly my home from. 
Lost I am, therefore. Uh, uh, as my name, too? Can you guess not? It's what I do this branch with and the way I speak of. Okay, so uh, for those grammarians out there, uh, he's speaking with a bunch of dangling participles where you just sort of have a that participle just kind of hanging out there, kind of waiting to be completed, but it's not. Sort of like the Yoda speak. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a English nerd. If you're lost, perhaps I can take you home. Take me home too? Think not I do. No, you I do not. Are you sure you don't want me to try to find your home? Trust you, I do not. Stay here, I will. Hmm. Uh, if there's only some way we could kind of uh, let him know that we have been to the Isle of Wonders and we are... Uh, yeah. He speaks in weird sentences, and here's another weird sentence. Let's see if these uh, these two things get along. Alexander doesn't want to do anything to alter the tree. Oh, that's the tree. Alexander holds the sentence out to the creature. This sentence seems in need of an ending. Perhaps you could finish it? Where are you going? Where are you going? No, what I do! Where are you going to? Like you, I do! Go I with you! I'm fine. Well, that was certainly interesting. It looks like Alexander now has a passenger. Hey, maybe you and uh, Lot and Tomato can get along. Take me home to. All right, if that's all you can say, let's go. One end of the creature resembles a miniature dragon, while the other looks like a possum. What a strange looking fellow. I like him. He's my pal, and I'm never taking him home ever. He's going to live in my pants forever and ever and ever. The dirt path starts at the sea and winds its way off into a densely wooded forest. Tall, narrow trees abound on each side of the path. This heavily forested isle is dotted with rough granite rocks. Nearby, the stump of a fallen tree still spreads its roots to the sea. Alexander is standing at the edge of the sea on a heavily forested island. As far as the eyes can see, tall trees spread out their branches as though straining to link arms, their tops forming a canopy above. A path leads north through the forest. Just such poetic writing. Jane, love it. The water seems tranquil at the moment, but a dimpling pattern on the surface indicates a strong undertow. A little fawn is feeding on a grassy hillock near the sea. The fawn is too busy eating to pay attention to Alexander. Alexander resists the temptation to pet the fawn, thinking he might frighten it. And the fawn, as far as I know, is just set dressing. It doesn't really do anything, but it's a, it's a cute touch. I like it. Oh my. A pond lies across the path. The water boils as if over some magical flame. Funny. Alexander is traveling on a... A rabbit hops about rather fearlessly. It's probably never even seen a human. Hmm, you think it'd be a little bit more afraid of something it's never seen that's six feet tall. An old abandoned hunter's lamp is hanging on one of the trees. Alexander wonders who might have hunted in these dense woods. And who would have left it hanging in a branch? The dirt path from the beach leads straight into a pond. Beyond the pond, the path continues into the forest. Can I take these mushrooms? I've never tried that. The forest is dotted with clumps of wild mushrooms. Mine. Alexander, not being an expert on poisonous mushrooms, decides not to take a chance on tasting the local variety. Well, if we need to get to know the mushrooms, there's no better way than talking. The mushrooms are fundamentally unvocal. Fungiment... Uh, yeah, I'll give it to you. The only response Alexander gets from the tree is the faint sound of wind in its upper branches. Listen here, pond. I wish to pass. The pond, rather hot-headedly, refuses to respond. Alexander is greeted with silence. Oh, you can kind of hear the, the, uh, 
The difference there, that was recorded a little bit differently than everything else was. The banks of the pond don't utter a word to Alexander. So we got this boiling pond, which I believe is too hot for us to cross. Will he even try? Alexander decides to brave the boiling pond. Yep. Oh, delicious. Alexander soup. And soon realizes a deep sympathy for soup vegetables as he learns the true meaning of being in a stew. Tickets up. Next. It looks like Alexander's in a bit of a stew. Uh, use the same joke twice. Lame. Okay, so we have uh, access to something that's magically cool. Um, that would, I think, take care of a boiling thing. If not, like, get rid of it completely, but... At least make it passable. Uh, so let's go back to the Island of Wonder, and you'll notice that I was right. The uh, the water is completely evaporated from my uh, iceberg lettuce, so we have room to carry some more. And then we can, um, let's go take Dangling Participle back home, I think. Ale! Xander. I have a critter burning a hole in my pocket just for you. I found this little fellow lost on another island. Oh, he's so cute. Coming home, I am too. There you are, you naughty boy. I told you not to leave the island. Glad I am seeing you too. A most <laughs> solemn celebration. So bizarre. So, you found my dangling participle. I suppose I'll have to give you something. Uh, let's see now. Was it a rare book you wanted? Yes, sir. Well, then none of these will do. They've been sitting in the sun far too long and must be well cooked by now. This one is far more rare. A delicious little tidbit. Mm. Uh, thanks. I just got the joke. After how many years of playing this game, I just realized that he gives you a rare book and not the ones that are sitting out in the sun that have been cooked and are well done. This one's been in sun. It's rare. I can't believe it took me one over. Whatever. I'm the. Let's just. Let's just go. I. A rare book. I don't believe it. I'm still so disappointed in myself. Okay, let's get another head of iceberg lettuce. Alexander picks a head of. Ye gads! Ye gads! I love it. Okay. Now we gotta rush with this, because I think every screen or two, it, it loses a little bit of its integrity. No, it's still good. Alexander! Okay, Boiling Pond, bend to my chilly wishes. Hoping to cool down the Boiling Pond, Alexander throws in a head of iceberg lettuce. The pond's water slowly stops boiling, cooled by the ice. It still looks hot, but bearable. Mm. All right, time for my favorite little dance. Alexander decides to brave the steaming pond. Ouch! Ow! <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> the pond is no longer boiling, but it's hardly bathwater. I am Alexander dancing in the water. Ya la 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 la. Alexander takes the old hunter's lamp from the tree. See, with the perspective. Because that lamp was huge. It looked like it was dangling over top of the pond. It's like, oh, how am I going to reach that? But apparently it was on the far end. Ha ha ha. All right, done. The enchanted pond has been cooled by the iceberg lettuce. Though still hot, it is no longer boiling. And away we go. The pond gives Alexander the cold shoulder. That's not... That, that's, that's like the third time you've used that joke. Guy. As Alexander continues down the path, he gets the strange feeling that he's being watched. Probably from that really Come obvious on person over in the here garden. And see what I'm doing with these flowers. Never mind that stone fella on top of the gate. He won't hurt you any. He's just there to scare you. Oh, Glinty. I don't trust you, sir. A pleasant looking middle aged man is busy tending a small garden just past the wall. 
A stone archer sits atop the lintel of the gate like a silent guardian. His stone bow is tightly drawn and fitted with a single stone arrow. Ah. I'm Alexander of Daventry. Who are you? What difference does it make? Just come on over here. I'll tell you my life history if you still want to hear it. <laughs> uh huh. He's like, yeah, don't worry about me. Just come over here. Come say hello. Tell me. If it's conversation you want, just come on over here. I'll talk your ears off if we can sit down and talk face to face. Um, I can hear you just fine from here, Mr. Glint. Tell me. If it's conversation... Okay, I trust everybody. <laughs> gotcha this time! Tickets up. Next. That move was slightly erroneous. Oh, that's a stretch. Okay, so obvious. Yeah, can't get in there, but oh, what's this? The path through the woods runs through a gated wall here. Two stone statues stand guard on the gate's lintels. To the north, the path continues on through a hedge of roses and a dainty gazebo. Dainty gazebo. A man tends to a small garden plot on the other side of the wall. Come on through, I say. I can show you a path through the forest. Look, there's no point in hanging out here all day. I can show you the wondrous castle that lies in the middle of the island. Don't be so timid. So it appears, unlike the boy, uh, he will not just sort of give up and disappear. He will stay there forever until you get your ass shot by this guy. A brick lies in the grass. It must have come from the old brick wall. Oh, I wonder if that's a hint if I can dig my way through the brick wall. Yeah, and there's the hole it came from. Huh, nice touch. You aren't going to listen to me, are you? Well, we'll just see about that. That's odd. The gardener just disappeared. Hmm. The, the, the genie is just... He's not even trying to hide his identity. He could just be all like, well, I'll wait here until you're ready. Come on over. Hey, I got a shiny gold coin over here for you. Ha cha 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 cha. Alexander picks up the brick. Now, don't let that fool you. I can still get my ass shot very easily by this guy over here. So going through here right now is death. A gray brick wall runs to the east and west on either side of the path. Alexander closely examines the stone wall, but doesn't see anything other than gray bricks. Hmm, okay, so digging through there, no good. A delicate gazebo made of white painted pine and overgrown with rose vines leads north into what appears from here to be a garden. The path through the woods runs through a gated wall here. Two stone statues stand guard on the gate's lintels. To the north, the path continues on. Tall, narrow trees abound on each side of the path. Flowering rose hedges grow on either side of the path winding north. All right, so not much else we can do here at the moment until we find a way to protect ourselves from Arrows McGee over here. I am Alexander dancing through the water. All right, uh, we pretty much hit an impasse with the Isle of the Beast. I love what I think we're pretty much done with everything except for the Island of the Sacred Mountain. Alexander. And away we go. <laughs> All right, we got to make our way all the way up. So I'll see you at the end of the copy protection. Ugh. Oh, my God. OK, so I found the 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 alphabet that they're using and it's the the language of the ancients and it, yeah each one of these is like you know a b c d or whatever it's not like in any order it's just sort of like uh this is a uh this is b but every single letter has like a little story behind it because jane jensen like a this symbol represents harmony the cat the color of sienna earth and b this symbol represents sorrow, the albatross, the color of charcoal gray, and onyx. This symbol represents perseverance, this tortoise, the color sea green, and water. Yeah. 
My, oh, my mind. Okay, but the Master of Languages will soar. I forget. I think you read that in the manual somewhere, and then you have to just type in soar in the alphabet. So, S O A R. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge. All right, you've seen this before. God, I just realized how terrifying it would be in Alexander's shoes if the only thing that was supporting you between that and, like, it's got to be like a good 70 feet down now is just this like little rounded platform. I'm getting vertigo just thinking about it. Let's get upstairs. Okay, and from the manual, it says, uh, these, these are called the Stones of Stealth. Four men standing in a row, third from the left, and down you go. The rest in order move you on youngest, oldest, and second son. So, it's kind of cute. So, third from the left, and down you go. So, the rest in order move you on the youngest, the oldest, and the second son. So, youngest, oldest, second son. So, now, this is where some of that lore comes into play. Um, you need to know, from the manual, of course, the sacred four of the ancient ones, uh, which... I remember, not remember, I am reading, being tranquility uh, as the state of being, the caterpillar, the animal, the azure, the color, and air as the object. Okay, so now I just need to match up the um, the story of the letters to the, yeah, you get it. Okay, All Silent Cry the Noble Boulders is our final puzzle, and pretty much anything that has to do with flying or rising or anything like that is usually what they want so the one letter from each sentence you can pick out to say ascend a -S -C -E -N -T. there we go at last oh and look glinty mcglint is up here too alexander finds himself finally at the top of the cliffs mcglintock exhausted he steps over the lip of the plateau and stands Boop. why do you make such an effort to climb the cliffs young man the winged ones who live on this island have the power of flight you could have it too if you'd only eat a berry from this magical flying nightshade bush you're not fooling anybody See? The sweet berries will make you float like a petal on the wind. <laughs> Try some. You sound really familiar and suspicious. Also, it looks like the Grinch lives up there. The old woman has a pleasant grandmotherly face, but something about her makes Alexander uneasy. Come, stranger, trust me. Think of what I'm offering you. Blackberries grow only at the top of the bush, as though straining towards the sun. But who are you, matron? Who cares? Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I am only a poor old woman who wishes you well, handsome stranger. Think of me as your grandmama, if you like. How can this plant give the power of flight? Listen, son. I'll be happy to answer any questions you like, but only if you at least taste these delicious berries. All right, well, always trust your elders, right? All right. I'll try some of your berries. Oh, goody. Eat quickly, dear boy, and I'll show you the way to the Lord and Lady of this Isle. What? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly bitter, pretty one. Well, all right, McLintock, you got me. Tickets. Oh. Next. And then there's some land I have for sale in the Death Bogs of Tamir. Oh, King's Quest Four reference. Let's just take a look around. Hi. <laughs> in the distance, Alexander can see the peak of a majestic mountain rising Ooh. into the clouds. Alexander is standing at the top of tall cliffs. To the north is the peak of a mountain rising to meet the clouds. To the left is an ominous set of bolted doors. An old woman is standing nearby. She peers at Alexander with friendly interest. Friendly interest and a glint in her eye. Young man, you offend me! 
I try to help you and you insist on being rude. There's a natural opening in the rock near the nightshade bush. Huge doors are set into the solid rock of the mountain. Can I open them? Oh, How odd. well, bye. The old woman just disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Perhaps those berries are even more powerful than she led Alexander to believe. Oh, it's almost like she's evil. Oh, weird. I cannot interact with the door in any way. Huge door. I mean, I can talk to it. The heavy doors give away nothing. Interesting. There's no one to speak to here. Anymore. There's no one to... Alexander would feel a bit foolish talking to the opening in the rock. <laughs> I'm really kind of bummed out. It's like he moved to the door like I could do something with it. Nope. All right. Well, that's closed to me now. Uh... Okay, so he never really makes it to his destination, huh? All right, I found a fun little bug. Now, if you're careful, uh, don't click on the bush, but you can click on the hole next to it and crawl around in there, I think. Alexander crawls through the small opening in the rock. Alexander finds himself in a dark cave. Hmm, where's the gem? Uh, put... I don't have the... Gem to put in my mouth, but I have a pearl. This cave is too dark. Alexander should wait until he goes outside to try that. I don't think it kills me to wander around, does it? Or is there a chasm or something? Dead end. Nothing that way. Looks like there's a hole here. Alexander can't do much of anything in the dark cave. Okay, nothing I can do here until I come back with a flame, but I do have that hunter's lamp. That certainly makes light, right? This cave is too dark. Alexander should wait until he goes outside to try that. Hmm, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. All right, let's get out of here. Alexander crawls back through the passage to the top of the cliffs. We assumed so. All right, let's see if that took care of the bug. Now they kind of reset the screen a bit. There we go. Look, an intruder. Uh -huh. Hold! How did you get up here, human? Hi, winged ones. I climbed the cliffs. That is not possible. No one has solved the cliffs of logic in several centuries. And if the cliffs were to be solved, it would certainly not be by a human. I... I didn't mean to trespass. I only wanted to visit this beautiful island. No visitors have been welcome on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain in years. Not since the Red and White Queens had spies in the guise of friendly visitors steal our island's sacred golden fleece. But we will not display such foolish trust again. You will have to answer to Lord Azure and Lady Ariel. They will determine what will be done with you. I can assure you, it will not be pleasant. Okay. Also, in uh, the Silver Lining, you get to really explore uh, this domain here. And I think it's a lot friendlier. Mm, so they think the uh, Island of Wonder has their sacred fleece, another stolen treasure. With what trickery did you master the Cliffs of Logic and reach the city of the Winged Ones? You are the Vizier. Only the magic of clear thought, my lord. I meant no harm. The Cliffs of Logic? It is the sacred oracle's prophecy, Azure. Yes, Ariel. Hmm. It is lucky for you, human, that climbing the Cliffs of Logic is part of a prophecy that I cannot ignore. We have just been ordered by Wazir Al-Hazred himself to dispose of any strangers that might land on our fair isle. But the prophecy would have a different fate befall you. The prophecy predicts that whosoever climbs the Cliffs of Logic will defeat the Minotaur. The Minotaur has violated our sacred catacombs and eats our young in sacrifice. Our own daughter, Lady Celeste, was taken there only this morning as his most recently demanded offering. A dilemma, then. Whom shall I obey in regards to your fate? The Oracle or the Crown? But since al Hazred did not dictate how I was to dispose of intruders, and since you cannot possibly survive the catacombs, your imprisonment there should serve both purposes quite admirably. I will not resist you in this, my lord. I shall do my best to save your daughter. Hmm. 
First, I must tell you that the catacombs are a labyrinth of rooms, a place of exceeding danger. You will need many tools and clear wits to survive it. Azure, he must be allowed time to prepare for the task, if only in the slight chance that he could actually save our Celeste. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Oh, very well. Intruder, my guards will take you to the beach. Prophesied hero or spy, any soldier must be granted time to prepare for battle. Be warned. If you have the courage to actually return to the Isle of the Sacred Mountain and face your destiny, my guards will have orders to take you to the catacombs on sight. I understand, Lord Azure. If by some miracle you succeed, human, the prophecy grants you a visit with the Sacred Oracle. Her powers are mighty, her vision all-seeing. Many of our own citizens would be willing to risk certain death in the catacombs for a chance at a meeting with the Oracle. May that thought give you the courage to return. Oh, I will return, Lady Ariel. You have my word. Oh god, okay, I was really freaking out because I thought it was going to throw me in the catacombs immediately and my brain was going through, okay god, alright, what what tools do I need to survive? And I think I have most of them? If not all of them, I need to survive now. But, uh, okay, bye, you jerks. Well, that's a fine how do you know. So I think if I ever come back to the Isle of, uh, of the Sacred Mountain again, ever, and I'm thrown directly into the catacombs, whether I'm prepared or not. So let's make sure I am uber prepared. And before we go, let's do a few things we need to do to set ourselves up for success next time. So here's this little nightingale type of person who doesn't quite trust us. And why we still have the wind up nightingale, let's, uh, let's earn her trust a bit. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. Never understood why that always pops up. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. I take it away from you all. I like its head too, because it looks like it has like this little flat top, like Street Fighter Guile haircut, which I, which I really like. The nightingale sings her crystalline song in the boughs of the old tree. The nightingale looks at Alexander curiously, as though waiting for something. Hello, little nightingale. Of what do you sing? The nightingale only looks at Alexander curiously and continues to sing. That will come into play a little bit later. So now we have a nightingale friend, and... Your candy dish is empty! I am sorry, sir, but I have no more mints. Somebody has eaten them all. Well, get some more, then! I fear that is impossible. Without the fairy, I can no longer get imports from the other islands, and we do not grow mint extract on the Isle of the Crown. Oh, I hate not getting what I want! Hmm. Well, at least you're walking a little bit more steadily this time. Bye. Well, he was a jerk, wasn't he? Okay, so let's trade in the nightingale for the flute. Might I trade for that flute on the counter? Certainly. What do you wish to offer me in trade? My old buddy the flute, back in tow, and... You know, it's it's tradition now. We gotta look at another object as long as we're here. What's this object over here to the right? A helmet, probably belonging to the headless armor also in the shop, has found its way to a separate part of the counter. If the pawn shop owner wants to display the head and the body of the suit of armor separately, Alexander has no wish to attempt to reunite them. All right, well, your shop, your rules, bruh. All right, Ali. Oh, hello. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, we'll get to talk to you, sir, in uh, in just a moment. But while we're here, here, here's like a super rare book. Oh, I never got a chance to read the book. Alexander opens the rare book and looks inside. The book contains riddles and has a page missing. 
Alexander glances at a few of the conundrums, but finds himself more curious about the one that is missing. What was the riddle, he wonders? More importantly, what was the answer? So if you remember, if you think carefully back, you remember that little sheaf of paper that we found in the web? And it had that same kind of blue border around it? Yeah, so whatever that riddle was, love was the answer, baby. Okay, so anyway, so now that we have everything we need from that book, and you do get a point for looking at that book too, though you can kind of answer the question on its own when the riddle finally comes up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, here, Ali, take this book from me. I found this rare book, and I thought of your offer. Very interesting. Oh, it is a wonderful riddle Bink. book. Riddles are much more marketable than spells these days. I guess people believe more in mirth than in magic. Here is the spell book you wanted. And a fair trade it is, I must say. Enjoy it. I certainly hope so. We shall see how rusty my spell casting truly is. Ah, a little reference to King's Quest 3 there when he did a little bit of magic on his own. Okay, so next time we're going to have to take a look through this magic book of spells and see what I can and can't do. And we'll find out who this rather jolly fellow here with the whimsical theme music might be with the fantastic curvy purple shoes. But until then, as always, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.